Now, irony takes many forms, and in this case, it was Ma's last phone call that stamped the meaning of irony into our brains. The very next week, she did die, as if to say, see, I told you I was sick. Never having been close to Ma, especially those last ten years, I actually had to laugh when Margaret broke the news to me. What are the odds, I said, recalling the many times I'd been present when Mom cried wolf to Margaret. Actually, pretty good, Margaret explained. I mean, it's like playing the lottery. You buy enough tickets, and sooner or later you're bound to win. In her case, she cried wolf so often that it eventually came to pass. Not so odd when you think about it. I suppose... I said, but what are you going to do about the two grand Judy owes the fund? Margaret's face tensed up. I don't know. I've tried everything I know how. But you can bet that when Dad dies, and there's money to divide up among the kids, Judy will be... I looked around and noticed I was alone in this section of the store. And there, not five feet from me, was the chair where Lawrence Block himself had just sat minutes earlier. I knew I'd never get this opportunity again, so I sidestepped over to the other side of the table and sat down, feeling the vibes from my favorite author run up my spine. I grabbed the pen that had been left lying there and held it, as if I were the signer. I imagined that someday it would be just like this for me in my first book signing. As I sat there, pretending to be someone I wasn't, I noticed a customer enter the store and approach the table. I supposed that he was another autograph seeker, but he had no book in his hand. There were four or five copies of the book still lying on this table, and I decided to have some fun with this guy while the opportunity was still there. Hello, I said. Have you come to buy one of my books? I was really getting into this role-playing by now, and in some strange way I felt like I really was Lawrence Block for that brief moment. Yeah, a deep voice answered. You have any idea what you've done? No, I could go on about how Roy courted Paula and how the two began keeping steady company. But suffice it to say that for the next five months they became inseparable. And this is how we find ourselves at this point in our story. Roy circled the date on his calendar and began formulating his plan to propose to Paula once and for all. He was sure what he had in mind would be memorable for years to come and that this was one story they'd be telling their grandchildren about on their 50th anniversary. It was 20 minutes until closing time at the bank as Roy stood at the florist counter. He handed over his credit card, got his receipt, and waited as the florist placed a dozen long stem roses in the box and tied a pretty pillow. Mrs. Johansson, I said, I'm afraid it was a little more serious than that. They took William to the morgue. I'm sorry to tell you he was killed in the crash. Her face fell apart. No, it can't be. I just saw him a couple of hours ago. There must be a mistake. I shook my head and placed my hand on top of hers. No, I'm sorry. There's no mistake. It was William Johansson. We confirmed it with the boy's license. Mrs. Johansson pulled her hand out from under mine and stood. The blood had drained from her face, and she staggered backwards. One hand was held over her mouth, while the other hand was held out, fingers up, palm toward me, as if trying to push some imaginary object away. No, 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 she kept repeating. Not my Billy. I rose from the couch and walked toward the woman. I'm sorry, Mrs. Johansson. You can stop in at the courthouse and ask for Jack Walsh. He's the coroner. He'll help you go through the process of identifying and claiming the body. I have to go now, and again, my condolences. I let myself out, stepped down the three porch steps, and walked over to my car. I opened the driver's door and slid in. My brother, Fred, was sitting on the passenger side and looked to me for a reaction. Well, he said anxiously, how did she take it? I broke out laughing. <laughs> you should have seen her face. <laughs> she was as white as a sheet and shaking like a palsy victim. It was hilarious. <laughs> Fred laughed. I wish I could see your face when little Billy shows up later tonight without a scratch on him. <laughs> now that would be a Kodak moment. We laughed even harder when we got a mental picture of the mother's face. <laughs>